But you're also somebody that seems to have a high social antenna. You're socially aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So for you to speak out on some of these issues, whether it's environmentalism mm -hmm. or sharing your, uh, your views on certain subjects, the context of it is then going to lead you to be shot at or people to label accusations that you're not focused on your mm -hmm. career or you're not the professional in the certain stereotype they have. Yeah, and uh, it was really difficult at the beginning and I feel like at so many times, uh, there were so many moments that I questioned myself, you know, like, should I be doing this? Should I, you know, I was saying to my friend, like, should we really do this? Or, yeah. well, um, can you remember the first, the first thing you did that was sort of openly different? What was the what was the moment that you? I think, I guess it was like just kind of putting an emphasis on like my dress sense or like really posting on social media about me liking clothes and fashion and stuff like that. I don't think it was nothing political or nothing like about like a social or environmental issue yet. I think it just started with the clothes. Yeah, but mate, that shows you what the world we live in. That just wearing clothes <laughs> was, is slightly it, it different. Was, it was wearing really clothes and I think <laughs> growing my my hair long, which was like quite problematic for what it was yeah. <laughs> to so me. So were you yeah. surprised then by the scrutiny and the reaction and at times the criticism? So we have to put it into perspective in the fact that when I started doing all these things, then also as a team and as a club, we weren't performing in the same way that we weren't before, you know? So I think we need to take all these things into account because I feel if I would have been doing the same things off the pitch, but we won the league, I don't think we would have been talked about half as much, which is uh, the truth. So um, I felt that, you know, given social media and how media also portrayed how footballers should be like, or the fans or like whatever, it was like, okay, we lose a game, then you shouldn't be on social media. But you win a game, then you can do whatever you want. But it's not really like that because... For me, I've never, when I was young, I was more, but now I'm not someone that's on social media at all. I spend like on social media probably like 20 minutes a day. But because I've been on social media and I've been active before and there's still stuff about me on social media, then people think that I spend most of my time, you know, on my phone. They say, he's too much on social media. Uh, he should be focusing on football. But really, I'm like 20 minutes. But that's the perception of people. And um, even though so many footballers, for example, let's say they finish a training session and they spend eight hours playing video games, which it happens, then that is okay. But a guy spending 30 minutes on social media or talking about clothes because he likes clothes or going to a fashion show that takes uh, half an hour or something is way worse than spending eight hours yeah, playing PlayStation. Because it goes against the stereotype, yeah, right? That's it. That's it. And because also you're not playing well. So we need to find, uh, we need to accuse someone of not playing well or losing, you know, we need to put the blame on someone. So the easiest way was like the young guy, he has long hair, he likes clothes, he's weird. So <laughs> he's vegan, like what else do you want? You know, I have all the tags. So um, yeah. So let's just, I really want to clear this up because as you know, in my job as a, as a football presenter, I'm sometimes sitting with pundits and they will say things like, well, you know, I've seen he's, you know, designing his own fashion range. So is he really focused on his football? Mm -hmm. And I, I so badly want to sort of go back on those mm -hmm. moments. Often there isn't the time and it doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. I really want to clear up for people. So we have this real clarity here. Having interests outside of just kicking a football f for 15 hours a day is healthy, right? It, in your mind, it makes you a better footballer to have other things in your life to give you a rounded view of the world. So my... The first thing that I say to people when they ask me that is that imagine a footballer, he's just had a, a kid, a newborn kid. When he gets home, he doesn't do nothing that is not being with his kid and playing with him and taking care of him and stuff like that. He's not thinking about football at all, right? So what is the difference between that or someone just having another, you know, something else that he likes? You know, it's, it's a hobby, it's, it's another passion, the same as... The, your family can be your passion. For me, that is my passion. And it's not just clothes. I love photography. I love art. I love reading. I love so many things, you know. I'm someone that, you know, I love to learn. So I do online courses all the time, you know, things like that. So for me, I do everything that it's in my hands to be able to perform 100% at the weekend. And I can guarantee you that. I sleep nine hours a day. I eat the best I can eat uh, always at the same time. So I have like these routines and you know, I prep before training, I recover after training, I do everything I can. And when I'm out there, if I am not tired, that is going to compromise 
how I'm going to play in the next game, I'll do some extra. And I, I'm saying this for myself, but so many of my teammates are like that, you know, and people don't see that. But at the same time, being a footballer, which is like at the training ground, you spend four or five hours a day, means that I have a tons of time at home where I can be doing anything. And for me, doing something creative, something that I learn about myself, something that puts me more in touch with myself or with nature or with my surroundings, with what's going on socially, culturally. For me, that's a way of like becoming a better person and then at the same time becoming a better athlete or a better whatever I'm going to be in the future. So it's like for me playing video games, yeah, I play every now and then, but I can't do that every day. I feel like I'm wasting my time. So I feel like all these other things help me, you know, be in the process of creating something or like learning about something or connecting with other people, whatever it is. See, that's fascinating. And what I'm interested in is how, so if, if there's somebody listening to this that's open-minded to go, okay then Hector, tell me, how does photography help you out there on the field in terms of your professional job? Would you explain a bit about the yeah. skills that, that, that translate across? For sure. And to me, it's not only about the skills, but also about recharging, you know? Yeah. For me, being every day in a, in, in a football state, it's not healthy. For me, you know, there's players that can go home and watch game after game after game after game. That's not me. You know, I watch my games, my performances, my team's performances. Who are we going to play next? Uh, how can I, you know, help my team in? So I do the homework, right, for myself. But then, you know, I like to grab a camera and walk around the forest. And these things, what they made me is like, for example, they made me see stuff that I've never seen before, you know? If you one day walk in the street, the same walk that you do every day, but without your phone, and you really look around, you will notice things that you've never seen before. And to me, this is like a way of also being connected with like nature and with the stuff around us, you know? And I've moved to the countryside like a year ago. And um, it's the first time that I've seen the course of how, how trees or plants or flowers around me blossom. And that's something that when I was young with my granddad and they had a house in the countryside, I used to, you know, do all the time and it was like second nature to me, but I hadn't done that in like 20 years, you know, and these things, I think that, you know, they, they root me and they humble me and they made me realize that, you know, that I'm just like one more person in like this world. I don't know. It's like. Sense of perspective. Yeah, even, it's perspective. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just a normal person. And, you know, there's a, there's a common goal here. And I don't know, it's, it, it's a bit more um, deep than just, uh, you know, I take a picture and this translates into the game that this is, it's like a deeper, deeper sense that I just feel that these things make me feel better about myself and learning new things, like learning to take better pictures make me feel better. And, you know, the, the feel good sense is something that it's gonna put you in the game always in a, in a better position. Please hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give us a thumbs up, leave a review, but somehow get involved with the High Performance Podcast and become part of our growing community. Thanks for being part of the adventure.